Next True. question. Okay, this is part question, part opinion. In podcast 13, you stated mm-hmm. effectively, not ex- explicitly, that jujitsu is the martial art that takes the most time to become proficient. I disagree, and here's why. As a wrestler, I've been able to pick up jujitsu in a matter of about two months to the point where I can submit a blue belt here and there. I mostly control purple belt. Possibly there is white skill range along belts, which I only roll with lower uh, level players. I might just be a bad teacher, but I've not I've not had as much success teaching jujitsu guys to wrestle. After the same amount of, of time there after the same amount of time there may be a low high high school wrestling level, I found it extremely difficult to teach jujitsu players to shoot, penetrate with their hips, or effectively use their hips to defend us or scramble. Possibly my sample size is too small to form an accurate opinion, but I'm curious of your thoughts on the topic. Thanks, love listening and learning. So yeah, I guess when I said that, I should have said grappling in general, which is definitely harder to achieve a basic level of competence in rather than striking. Now, don't get me wrong. You take a skilled boxer, they will destroy an unskilled boxer. You take a skilled Muay Thai guy, they will destroy an unskilled Muay Thai guy. Do you, you've you trained with good Muay Thai people before, yes. right? The first person that I ever did that with that was a skilled Muay Thai, legit skilled Muay Thai, it was like a black belt versus white belt, right? Yeah. I would think about throwing a kick at him, <laughs> And he would check it, right? And then he would throw a kick at me before I even knew what was happening, right? Mm -hmm. They're that much better. They can see your hips. They move. It's the same same thing with boxing. If you go against a good boxer, they'll jack you up in that sport, right? In that sport, you will get worked. So now that being said, a good wrestler is a good grappler. You are a good grappler, and that's why you're able to pick up jujitsu very quickly because wrestling is grappling, which is jujitsu. There are there differences? Yes, there absolutely are differences. But it's like longboard sh- surfing and shortboard surfing. If you're, or, or, or baseball and softball. If you played baseball in college, when you get out on the, the, the office softball team, you're a killer. That's the way it is. Not, it's because you played soft. You played baseball. You didn't play technically softball. It's the same thing with with wrestling. And as far as the fact that it doesn't take long to learn, if you're a, a high level wrestler, to learn jujitsu, yes, absolutely, you'll learn it very quickly. Look at the history of the UFC: Dan Severn, Mark Coleman, Kevin Randleman, Randy Couture, Tito, all those high level wrestlers. And that's the history. Because guess what? High level wrestlers are there right now, too. Mm. John Jones, DC. It's it's wrestlers. It's wrestlers and wrestlers. Now, are there other guys that come in and, and fill it? But the 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 I would say the majority base is wrestling. Yeah. So now you also have to look, speaking of history, you have to look at the early UFCs or you go to any gym. And the fact is, the fact is, a jiu-jitsu only guy beats a wrestling only guy in a fight nine times out of 10. That's the way it is. That, that, now, if the wrestler can learn very quickly, but if the wrestler only knows wrestling, and the jiu-jitsu guy only knows jiu-jitsu, the jiu-jitsu guy is going to win. Simply because the wrestler doesn't know how to finish the fight. He doesn't know how to finish it. He doesn't have any submission holds to finish a fight. So can they occasionally nine times, you know, one time out of 10 or whatever, get something and, and yes, that can happen. But, and, and also I'm not talking about if you take a NCAA wrestler, right. And you put them against a white belt, yeah. or or maybe even a blue belt. There's a chance that the blue belt can't submit him. The guy's yeah. just too strong. That's if he has some awareness. If he has no awareness whatsoever, he's going to get tapped out. Yeah. And if you watch the early UFCs, that's exactly what happened. You know, the wrestlers they might get position, but they were getting choked. They were getting tapped. And you go to any gym right now. You have a tough wrestler walk in that doesn't know any jujitsu. He's going to get tapped out. I mean, mm-hmm. f- for instance. Right now at our gym, 
we got a really good wrestler named Taylor Johnson, and I'll bring his name up because he, it's I can remember it all because it's all been recent. He's been training now for less than a year. When he first came in, he was getting tapped out. You know, that's the way it is. He's a phenomenal wrestler. Two months later, he wasn't getting tapped out. Six months later, he's tapping people out. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens. But if you take physically kind of close people and you put pure wrestling against pure jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu is going to win. Now, there's also another thing that you're probably noticing in this situation, and that is that wrestling, wrestling selects for athleticism. Mm. Right, wrestling selects for athleticism. And for you to be competitive in wrestling, you need to be strong, quick, athletic, agile. All those things are important. And, and I've seen that you know, with the, uh, the school where my kids wrestle, and you see it, what it's like when you get a strong athletic kid and how they're able to execute moves better than someone that's not that good of an athlete. Mm -hmm. And so wrestling does that Wrestling is selective. So if you wrestled, guess what? You're a really good athlete. You And if you did well wrestling or you wrestled for a long time, it, you developed that athleticism because you had to be explosive. You had to train hard. So that's that. Also, blue belts, you look at a blue belt, a blue belt is basically a person that's been doing jiu-jitsu for a year. Maybe two years, right? So that's the same thing as a lower level high school wrestler, right? A low level high school wrestler is a guy that didn't start wrestling until he was a freshman year. Started wrestling, well that's a low level high school wrestler. And guess what, he's getting beat. So you should be, if you're a good wrestler, you should be able to, once you understand the basic principles of Jiu Jitsu, you should be able to beat blue belts because they're a year into the game. That's the way mm -hmm. it is. Um, yeah, you, know, you take a, a competitive wrestler and you go against somebody that's, you know, seven years in, and now they're a brown belt. Well, that's that's a competitive high school wrestler. That's a senior, and he started training in sixth grade. That's seven, eight years. Go against a seven or eight year jujitsu guy. You've got now you've got a good match, mm -hmm. and likely, the jujitsu guy is going to win. Now, again, if you take no, if you take a pure wrestler versus pure jujitsu, the jujitsu guy is going to win all day, all day. So. Um, you know, I, there's no denying, and like I just said, there's a reason that wrestling is the the premier skill set in the UFC that predicts champions. No doubt about it. It is a great and incredible martial art. I I wish that that wrestling had kept its roots as catch wrestling and still had submission holds and all that because it would just completely change the game. But it doesn't, so you have to add them later. There's also something else too where I think that I think that people in general, wrestling's not for everybody, mm. right? It's a very hard sport. And I think that people avoid that grind of, as far as, as, far as okay, you're gonna get good at wrestling now, I'm a jiu-jitsu guy, now I'm gonna make you good at wrestling. Mm. Jiu-jitsu guys avoid the grind. I shouldn't say all of them, but some, uh, often, mm -hmm. jujitsu guys avoid the grind of the takedowns and the intensity of wrestling. They're not looking for that. That's one of the things that makes jujitsu appealing to a very broad range of people, is that you can train it at a at a mellower pace, right? Mm -hmm. And that's also why if you go to jujitsu tournaments, wrestlers do really well in jujitsu tournaments because they understand the intensity of rounds of limited time, of smashing someone, yeah. of going all out. Jiu-Jitsu guy that's been training in the gym, they ain't ready for that first tournament. There's mm. no Jiu-Jitsu guy in the gym that goes to the first tournament and says, yeah, that was just like what I thought it was gonna be like. No, mm. they're not used to that intensity. <laughs> they're not ready for it. So, uh, I mean, and and of course, not taking away from Jiu-Jitsu guys that train like madmen with total intensity and get after it super hard too, because those guys exist as well. And also, last little thing on this. There are also some wrestlers that don't adapt to the slower pace of jiu-jitsu. They can't adapt to that, and they don't adapt to the slower pace of MMA, and so they their whole career, they gas out. And there's plenty of pro MMA fighters, UFC, that have come in, high-level wrestlers, 
that they couldn't ever quite make the transition to MMA. So, you know, bottom line, these are uh, these are points that I pretty much agree with that the that this this guy made. And wrestling's awesome. I think it's a great base. I think it's it's a form of grappling, mm-hmm. and it complements jujitsu, and jujitsu complements it. And I wish that it was one sport. Yeah, but it's not. So you have to do both. Yeah, and it seems like, like to, because he was originally not complaining, wasn't complaining, but he his premise was that, you know, jujitsu is is not in fact the hardest one to master. You know, wrestling. He's implying that wrestling is harder to to master. Mm-hmm. To, you know, because he taught jujitsu guys wrestling and they didn't pick it up. Right, that, that was kind of it. Uh, in jujitsu. You can break all kinds of wrestling mo- rules in jujitsu. Yeah, and but wrestling guys, when they'll come in, if they they have to learn to break some wrestling rules, otherwise it's going to be their detriment. Sure, a lot of them, a lot of them carry over. Right. A lot of you know, a lot of the strength and explosive yeah, I, I sit outs. See what, and stuff. I see what you're saying. But man, if a wrestler can't break the rule to to go to his back. You know, because a lot of wrestlers, the wrestlers will give up their back all day because yeah. they don't want to go on their back, you know, mm-hmm. and th- that's why they're going to get choked all the time. But if like Taylor, you, th- that's a good example, bro, he'll flop to, he broke that rule quick yep. and that's why he's so good because he can expand his mind and break that rule. So, but consider the jujitsu guy right now, he has to learn all these. So he has to essentially, and not so much break the rule. He has to probably break some rules. You know, by not going his back, whatever. But a jujitsu guy doesn't have to break any yep. jujitsu rules necessarily. So well, it's case, like, wait, why am I going to do point. this? Case in point. How much time and effort am I going to put into learning a takedown correctly when it barely decides the match? Exactly right. When and you so don't have a, to. There's That's a what I mean. mental. There's a mental uh, gap mm-hmm. in the, the desire for knowledge because. If I if you take me down, cool. I'm gonna guillotine you. Exactly. I'm gonna you're not gonna pass my guard. Whereas when a wrestler shows up, he has to learn this mm-hmm. stuff. Otherwise, he's losing. He's getting tapped out. He's getting choked. Yep. So that's a great, great uh, point there. Yeah. Very true. So yeah. You so, don't have to, you know. And even when you say, okay, jujitsu should focus more on takedowns, and it's really cool, and you should definitely focus yep. on takedowns. You got to learn them, and it's very important. But at the back of your mind. As a jujitsu guy, I'm like just bull guard. Yeah, I don't really care if you take me down. It's okay. Or and then now we're talking about in this case we're. Talking I'm not about saying the, that me personally because I don't like. Right, to be right. Taken I'm down. just saying potentially. But and here's the thing to even add to that even, if you're considering the comparison of wrestling and jujitsu, take the takedown situation. Take not all takedowns are are quote unquote wrestling takedowns. I can be like okay, I can not learn wrestling at all and still be good at takedowns if I learn judo. Well, if I, you know, if I learn something else, so it, again, so it goes, it's basically, you're taking something really vast uh, with a lot of easy ways to maneuver around certain techniques and still be vastly successful. And then you're, you're basically saying, okay, let's take that, a person who has that approach and narrow it down to this much more difficult approach and way less effective approach. Essentially mm-hmm. it's the vastness of grappling. I can still be successful in gra- grappling without learning X, Y, Z wrestling moves. And then you want to teach them these X, Y, Z wrestling moves. Probably some that can go against you, especially when it comes to energy, energy conservation and yeah. all this other stuff. Yeah. That's why a guy maybe, yeah, it might be difficult to to learn that. But how you said there's a gap in the motivation to yeah, learn. There's a so it's difficult gap. to want to learn or care, or care about learning this thing when it's going to serve me less yeah. in my grappling. No doubt. You can just look at the human facts of jujitsu. There's a reason why takedowns are not emphasized very much in yeah. jiu-jitsu at a normal academy. Right. In a normal academy, they do not have the focus on takedowns like wrestling. Wrestling, yeah. wrestling the takedown wins you, doesn't win you the match automatically, but that's a huge part of wrestling is mm-hmm. getting the takedowns. Jiu-jitsu, it's... it's a little tiny percentage of the match. Does yeah. it give you two points? Yeah, but it doesn't mean anything to me because I'm going to submit you. Yeah, so. and, just, and just the nature of the of the game. You know, wrestling is takedown pin. There's pro- there's more to it. I understand, but jujitsu is just submit the guy. You know, so jujitsu in in a way, it's like just just get it to the ground. 
You can yeah. win off your back. Yeah. You can win from the top. You can win a wrestling event like that. Yeah, I mean, so, people literally pull, pull guard. guard and then win from their back. <laughs> Spend the zero seconds yeah. on top, zero, yeah. and yeah. win the match. And Even so, though, so the fact that you can pull guard gives you this entire out right. to get away from doing takedowns, and you can yeah. still be victorious. Yeah. Very, very often. Yeah, and that goes along with these even these techniques that he mentioned, like you know, uh, you know, th- see hit. The, basically, the there's there's a lot of moves in there. They're big moves, big moves, and they do help you. But like I said, they, they're just they're simply not necessary. You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's... any physical move is helpful yeah. to know and know how to defend, whether it be from offensive, uh, you know, or defense position. But again, if you're trying to narrow it down and teach these guys who their approach and their knowledge comes from the vastness of grappling yeah. and you want to narrow it down to this thing. It may or may not work, you know, and it may or may not serve you. It could work against you, but here, let's try to learn this real hard. Yeah. You're going to have that gap in motivation. Yeah, Those guys it. actually don't care about the takedowns. Yeah. And I'm going to go on record now as saying this, just because Jiu-Jitsu doesn't focus on takedowns doesn't mean that you shouldn't focus. You should learn takedowns. You need to know takedowns from a self-defense perspective, from an MMA perspective. Takedowns, wrestling, you have to do it. I mean, that's why my kids wrestle, you know? It's because I didn't wrestle, and I hate that fact. Because I go against, a like he's saying, you know, I go against a good high school wrestler, it's hard for me to take him to the ground, you know? You get somebody that wrestled in college, I know what's. I know I'm not going. Now I yeah. I have developed good takedown defense over the years, and it's actually takedown offense because I have offensive ways of defending the takedown. You know I'm going to throw submissions yeah, and stuff, but I can't go back in time and go through the the training that you get when you're a high school wrestler and yeah. uh, and a college wrestler. I can't yeah. do that. I can't do it. I mean I just don't have the time. And the motivation to do it because I'm in the same boat as as you know what the guy that you're just talking about how much time am I gonna focus on takedowns I know I go against a college wrestler he's taking me down I go against a good high school wrestler there's a good chance he's taking me down yeah so how much time and effort I mean I could spend the next five years I could go through a competitive circuit I could join the wrestling club but am I gonna do that right now is that time effective or do I just want to get better at jujitsu yeah. And then have access to the rest of the grappling spectrum that you just talked about. Well, it's an obvious choice. I'm going to focus on the spectrum that has the most, uh, the most application yeah. in every situation I'm going to be in. Yeah. So yep. if you if you get the chance, wrestle, wrestle as much as you can. Yeah. Learn your takedowns. Yeah. Drill your takedowns. Put your kids into wrestling. Jiu-jitsu for sure. Put your kids into wrestling. Yeah. They don't have to worry about it then. Yeah fact remains some people they don't want that beef you know where you got to go and wrestle your man that's hard you know and even like a wrestling you can have a wrestling style to your jujitsu you know but again if you if you don't want that you know who didn't wrestle craig craig baker Baker, yeah didn't wrestle yeah if you you train with him you'll be like oh where did you wrestle in college is what you'll be thinking he's pure jujitsu yeah didn't wrestle in college yeah didn't wrestle in high school yeah didn't even wrestle in high school he feels like a total wrestler when you train with him and his takedowns are great yeah and there's some brazilian guys that have come up that you know brazilian ufc fighters that are very good wrestlers that never wrestled before they have really good takedowns yeah and but you know you're gonna you're gonna have to you have to work for that and these kids that come out of high school, yeah, that wrestled in high school, they got it. Yeah, it's a little gift. Th- that work has little been little put gi- in. Yes, yeah. little gift that they got. Yeah, but for these guys, and back to the question, for these guys that he's trying to teach, and he totally says like it could be my sample size. I understand, and, and yeah, that's yeah. a good point yeah. actually. But um, because the sample size be big, you can get guys like Craig. They'll pick that stuff yeah. up real quick. Yeah. But at the end of the day when it comes to as he put it when it comes time to shoot penetrate with their hips or effectively use their hips to defend or scramble you can omit all of those things from a jujitsu guy and he can still win yeah. and be vastly yeah, yeah. successful you know so scramble mm, you gotta no, yeah, you but you it's scrambles to... scrambles a, a, a questionable one you yeah. have to be able to scramble that, yeah but again i mean let me let me you Scrambling is a very good, valuable thing to have in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, agreed. much more valuable than 
you know, being Shooting. able to penetrate on a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. But yeah, wrestlers, right? That's a weird, that's such an interesting one. Bro, I roll with this. I'm, I feel bad that I forget his name, but I roll with him every time I see him. And he's swallowing me. I give him maybe 165, maybe, and but an awesome wrestler, mm -hmm. new guy too, under one year. And his game is wrestling, but he's like high level wrestler, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So if I play the wrestling game, and I know I know wrestling, like yeah. I'm solid. I can wrestle against good wrestlers, maybe not Taylor, but good wrestlers. So I can play, and I'm bigger than him, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I go and wrestle to wrestle this guy, bro, he like it, he runs give game me, on you. Yeah, yeah, he'll run yeah, his game. Of course. But if I if I just slow down in my mind, be like, okay, he's a wrestler, Dude, then you let's just it. yeah, let's work around the wrestling. Oh, no problem. Yeah, you know. But once once he if he can give up the wrestling rules, you know, you know how he did yeah, yeah. Uh, he because he has that athleticism, he can switch his hips like all quick base, just like like he's built into the ground. That's how good his base is. You know, it's anyway. But yeah, wrestling. Yeah, awesome. and I guess from a human nature perspective here, if you were to apply this to other situations in life, think about when you're trying to get people to do things. Think about the motivation that they have in their head not not motivation of like hey let's go but not the actual the actual mental motivation of what they're going to gain from what you're trying to give them and do they see the reason of yeah. why it's important yeah very got to apply that across right the board jiu jitsu is life <laughs> wrestling is life wrestling is life grappling grappling is life